Recently, I produced a commentary concerning the fact that the very first people to believe that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah were Jewish people, and that as believers, we are part of Israel, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. As a result of a puzzling vision regarding unclean animals, Peter was shown that the gospel was to be taken to the nations, that Gentiles were not to be considered common or unclean. It seems that my previous commentary generated a great deal of interest in the subject of clean and unclean animals. Growing up in a traditional Protestant church, I was taught that restrictions regarding pork and other things that the Bible calls unclean were just for the Jews. But when I began to do a little research on my own, one of the first things that got my attention was the fact that Noah knew the difference between clean and unclean animals hundreds of years before Jewish people came on the scene. He took seven pairs of clean animals on the ark and only two pairs of unclean animals. Instructions regarding clean and unclean animals are not exclusively Jewish in nature. They're God's instructions. He wanted his chosen people to know that he did not create unclean animals for food. Around 168 BC, Antiochus Epiphanes defiled the temple by sacrificing a pig there in Jerusalem. Almost everyone agrees that was a terrible thing. Even so, today many Christian theologians have all sorts of excuses why believers can bring swine's flesh and other unclean animals right up into the temple, our bodies, where the Holy Spirit of God dwells. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. In conclusion, let's take a look at one additional scripture reference. Isaiah 66, verses 15 through 17 clearly referring to future events. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Who are these people eating unclean things with no regards to the instructions of our Creator? By fire and by His sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Facts.